Hi everyone, Angus Campbell here, Friday the 22nd of November, and back on the A70 Lightning. So uh, let's uh, crack on without further ado and complete the installation of the clutch, and then we'll go on to the uh, stator and rotor at this end. So all I've got to do with respect to the clutch is uh, torque down uh, the centre nut and then just fit the uh, the face plate with the uh, springs as well. So give me five minutes and we'll get that sorted out. Okay, clutch centre nut uh, was talked up okay. Um, setting for that is 60 to 65 foot pounds. So uh, managed to lock the uh, clutch centre on its studs and then uh, get the uh, torque wrench onto the onto the center knot so so that's done so uh, now fitting the outer plate and uh, the springs the uh, spring free length should be around about uh, 46 millimeters these are slightly short at about 44 uh, but not too bad so I'm going to uh, I'm going to use them and install them as I think that's um, well it's probably a little bit outside tolerances but anyway we'll get them fitted um, there still seems to be plenty of life in them, in them yet, so we're going to use them. So I'll get those fitted up and then we'll come back and we'll uh, fit up the stator and rotor. Right, clutch job complete. So onto the rotor and stator. I've uh, cleaned uh, these up, they cleaned up well. The uh, rotor has uh, no significant scoring on it and is uh, still got plenty of magnetism still got the original uh, punch marks etc denoting this is uh, manufactured in uh, 371 at the top there so March 71 um, but that's in uh, in good condition as I say with plenty of magnetism um, the stator also is in Good condition however I'll need to do a little bit of work on the end wires here because uh, one of them's okay but one of them uh, just needs um, some additional insulation on it um, as I think that probably the chain or something like that has been uh, chafing against that at some point so we'll just need to address that. But we can do that with the stator on the bike before we thread the wires through the back of the crankcase. So we'll get this fitted up first, for the time being anyway, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, there we go, folks. Uh, rotor on, uh, rotor knot with the tab washer and then a flat washer, torqued up to uh, 60 foot pounds. Uh, tab washer turned over and then the uh, stator installed with its three uh, five, sorry seven sixteenths lock nuts with no washers uh, so that's primary drive side done except for just to check the tension of the chain and also just to tidy up the stator wires before we then feed them through the back there, which is down, down through there, which shouldn't be too bad, it's only a two wire stator. Um, so we'll crack on with that uh, in the next clip. Morning all, uh, Angus Campbell here, it's next morning, Saturday 23rd. Uh, so we plan today, uh, plan for this morning, and um, to what to uh, try and complete. Um, for the rest of this video is first of all we'll we'll sort out the alternator wiring you can see sorry it's not uh, focusing too well but you can see that wire there has uh, rubbed on something in the past might have been round about the chain actually uh, this one's fine it is okay up uh, up the top here towards the uh, plastic sheathing so we'll just clean that up, make sure that it's uh, 
that the, the core is in good condition and then we'll just put some uh, shrink shrink fit around that which will be fine and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll thread it through at the back so that's one job next job um, I think it's going to be a bit, bit of a bits and pieces morning really just tidying up things that we've come across on the way one of which um, is in an early video we identified that this sprocket is quite a bit bigger than standard it's uh, 52 rather than 47 so therefore the standard 110 pitch chain is too short uh, I've got uh, chain more chain in stock and the tools to uh, extend this properly with rivets so we'll get on with that job today and then we'll go on to the other side of the bike and try and finish the uh, the timing side and then we uh, we'll move on and uh, attempt to do maybe a bit of uh, polishing on the uh, on the outer cases um we've had a first pass on the timing case it does look look a lot better it is quite scarred from a previous life um but i'm not too worried about that as long as it'll polish up okay uh, it's not coming up too bad, but it's not, that's by hand, and it's not really the same as uh, as a machine polish. And similarly, that's the uh, the sort of condition all the cases were in. Um, that being the primary case, of course. Uh, so that needs a good, good clean up. But I do have uh, kits which I can use on the bench grinder here and change the wheels out. So we've got buffing mops. There we go. Buffing mops and soaps, um, which I've had in stock for some time and never used. So uh, we're going to give that a go if we get there. So those are the jobs that we're going to crack on with for the A70 today on the Saturday, and then tomorrow we're going to turn our attention to the. Uh, E35S S Fury motor, um, which is uh, just about complete with respect to it's just its first fit. Um, uh, tomorrow we're going to strip the lot down into parts, and then uh, that will build. They'll will then prepare the parts for uh, the final assembly, um, mainly uh, cleaning up, ensuring all the torrents are correct, etc. On the final build, and um, we'll adopt the same. Strategy is with the uh, A70 Lightning is that uh, once the uh, the bottom end is together, then we'll uh, we'll put that into uh, the waiting rolling chassis and build the rest up from there as it's on the uh, on the lift. That makes it quite a bit easier. So there we go. That's the plan for the week this weekend. Um, so first of all, let's get set up and uh, cracking on back on the uh, primary case side of the Lightning. Okay, I've got it on the stand uh, near the bike actually, so I've got two hands. Well, since I've done something relatively uh, live, so first of all, just clean up these two wires. So this is going to be uh, white, green, and yellow, green, and these two go ultimately to each side of the uh, rectifier. And yeah, the yellow green is actually fine, not cracked, not split, but the white green has definitely been uh, rubbing against something. But uh, the core is in is intact. It just needs some uh, some insulation, and also the exist uh, the original insulation towards the black, uh, the original black sheathing is in good condition too. There is one crack near it, but we can pretty much cover that. And the way to do it is uh, with a short bit of, uh, of shrink fit. And um, you can get kits of uh, these short pieces of various diameters from, uh, from Halfords actually. Or any stores like that, obviously, are going to be a bit expensive from from Halfords, but uh, it's actually a, a damn a damn useful kit. Uh, 
and uh, one of those pieces is exactly the right size without cutting it. So then we'll just use a, a heat gun to shrink that down and that'll give it a bit of strength as well as uh, insulation. Just make sure um, it doesn't cover the bullet too much, that's better. And there we go. So we'll wait for that to cool down and then we'll feed that through its hole in the back of the, uh, the casing there. And it, uh, it does come out, I believe, close to uh, the back of the sprocket. So we might need to attack it a little bit from uh, from the other side. Okay, that's cooling off nicely and shrunk down. So it's now tight on that, uh, that wire. It's amazing how much it does shrink actually. To get it over, to the, over the bullet, you think you have to get a pretty big uh, diameter sheath, uh, but it's shrunk down fine. Okay. That's that done. Uh, we'll just uh, do a bit of prep now to uh, to facilitate feeding this through. It's going to be a bit of an awkward job, but as long as I can get the bike out, just so I can uh, lie down and get underneath it, we should be okay. So let's get prepped for that. Right, I'm going to push the uh, the wires through, and um, it'll go into the um, cavity for the sprocket etc but there is a gap between uh, the gearbox housing itself and uh, the front um, crankshaft crankcase uh, and therefore the wire should uh, feed through there so I'm going to push it through and then we'll pull it through from the other side afterwards once we've repositioned the bike and hence the uh, hence the length of the wire um, the, the hole to push it through uh, is a reasonable size, but you still need to stagger the bullets to get it through. But it's easy enough to do. It should be anyway. There we go. she goes. And we hunt the wire on the other side once we've pushed it through, but it seems to be uh, going through okay anyway, and all feeding through. Just need to be careful we don't damage it too much.
Okay, it's nearly all the way through, so um, what I'm going to do now is just finish off the final job here before we then go the other side, find that wire and just uh, tease it through and then make sure that we push the, uh, the inner rubber seal over the end of the hole to prevent any oil leakage from there and the seal's uh, still in good condition and still nice and soft so that's good. So all I've got to do is, is tension the chain, a little bit slack at the moment but there's plenty of uh, adjustment on it. that There we are. Beautiful. Okay, pleased with that. Right, let's just get that wire sorted out. And then we can say that's the primary drive done. So I'll just do a bit of rearranging here so we can get to uh, the underside and the other side of the bike. I uh, might have to take the chain guard off just to get a bit of access, but let's see where we are first. Okay, I've just popped the uh, chain guard off. Uh, I've taken the chain off because obviously we want to uh, extend that as part of uh, one of the jobs today. But um, they are, can you see them? The, uh, the two bullets uh, are peeping out there already. So let me just put the torch down. There they are. So that's good. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll now pull those through further so we can uh, take up a bit of slack there, get that seal pushed on and then <coughs> we've just got to reroute those wires at the back of that uh, rear um, or the back sprocket uh, black cover there there is a, <coughs> a gap on the the other side of it so that we can route the wire the other side and then it will essentially come out on uh, on the top of the motor down here and we'll be able to route it then up to uh, the main harness and the and the rectifier which comes down the main spine there. Right, we'll get up on with that now and then I'll bring you back. Okay, there we are. Uh, job done. Took a bit of uh, teasing through uh, in the end. But what I wanted to ensure was that uh, that wire is rooted properly with its seal on it. Um, well away from uh, chains and sprockets and everything that's going on around there and uh, that's worked quite well so uh, 
wires poking out the back there so it's just a quick job now of uh, rerouting those at the back of the uh, plate and uh, that's that's that done okay there we go uh, wires out and routed through correctly uh, behind the sprocket back back plate so that means it's well away from the sprocket isn't going to get rubbed uh, they're protruding there and those tie into where are they there they are the uh, two bullets whoops there we go the two bullets there with the uh, colour coded wires down from the main loom so we just need a couple of bullet connectors now and we can connect them up okay it's official uh, primary side uh, done uh, my, my technique to uh, say it's ready for the cover, etc., and all prepared is to uh, put the uh, the gasket on ready. So we just need to polish up the uh, the covering. We can get that on. Uh, we're all connected up at the back here into uh, the main harness. We just need to uh, to tie wrap um, that up, or um, maybe use a, a couple of the original uh, rubbers. I hate tie wraps. Um, so the other other um, a couple of the original rubbers uh, strapped together the original rubbers were great rubber ties like so and that's that done uh, regarding the uh, rear chain I haven't got any spare uh, 5 8 3 8 chain uh, to extend the chain that I've got so I'll have to order some of that up so uh, what we'll do now then is uh, have a cup of tea and then we'll uh, skip around uh, to, the, to uh, the other side and see if we can make some progress on the timing side too. Just getting a prep for timing side then, so uh, we've got the kickstart return pin and uh, I'll start again. We've got the kickstart return spring and its retaining plate and um, when I purchased the bike it didn't have any contact breakers on it so uh, I purchased a second hand set off the net and these are in really good condition actually. The points are good and uh, all the screws are there and there's evidence in one or two places that they've been adjusted uh, ham-fistedly. They're slightly chewed but uh, all very serviceable so I've just cleaned that up. Uh, also I've got the uh, sump gauze filter clean, being cleaned up at the moment because we'll put the uh, the sump plate on while we're at it and then we've just got uh, a small rubber plug uh, that seals the uh, hole that this uh, this wire uh, exits the outer case from so we'll uh, zip this lot uh, over and uh, set you up again and we'll have a go at uh, fitting these final pieces before we're then ready to uh, see about polishing cases ready for the fitment Okay, we're on the other side of the uh, bike now, timing side. So we've got auto advance point to go there, and then we've got the uh, kickstart return spring to go there, which as always uh, will be a trial of strength. Um, but first, let's get the auto advance in. Um, this has been uh, cleaned up and oiled up um, previously. It was uh, it was seized, but it's uh, it's not worn uh, at all, really. So we've managed to unseize it easily enough and uh, free it off and oil it up. Uh, I do have a, a bolt for it, but um, it's quarter UNF, but it's a little on the short side. I do have one on the way that's a bit longer, um, but this one will allow us at least to to mount this up. Uh, but it doesn't really. Give it enough threads to really tighten it too much so I'm not going to push that but it does work well when it's fitted and then the points that uh, I showed you before these are all cleaned up um, as are the connecting ends the wires are clearly visible as to uh, black yellow black white um, and also I've just put on a, a plug for for the exit hole so we can seal that 
but I will need to probably put uh, a bit of silicon sealer on that. So we're only going to mount this pretty, pretty loosely initially. Not quite sure which way around the wires should go, to be honest. Two screws, short screws with uh, spring washers. Again, I'm not going to mount these too tightly because we'll need to loosen all this lot off when we uh, time the motor up statically initially and then with a strobe. I think it makes sense for the wires to come this way like so. because we then can uh, caption behind this little clamp. Exit out the back here, like so. So we'll get the rubber bung in roughly the right position. There she goes. Push the bung in. There we are, pretty tidy. I think uh, what I might be doing before we put the final cover on is just checking these uh, connections. and also the insulation. Don't particularly like the look of that too much. That needs a little tiny bit of work. Okay, right, we'll move shortly on to uh, the kickstart return spring. Okay, so uh, points, auto advance, um, guide for the wires, plug, and also I've um, just finished uh, shortening a, a couple of uh, screws so they fit properly here. Uh, some of these were uh, missing originally as well. So that's all the internal screws now fitted to. Sorry, I just bashed you. And then we've got external ones too, but they're all done too. And then the remaining holes are external screws and that is for the clutch push rod. Uh, but now we'll have a go at uh, tensioning this. And basically we've got to rotate the spring plate, spring retaining plate, probably about Let me just think here actually, that goes that way, so that's got a tension that way more, so yeah that's correct. More tension that way, yeah, so just making sure it is the right way around. 
So I'll probably get some uh, some grips on this. Um, twist it anti-clockwise until the flats on this match with the flats on the kickstart shaft and then push it on and it, it's in position and that then stays in position and allows you to uh, remove the outer cover uh, without this uh, exploding while you do it. So let me uh, get busy with this. Uh, there might be a bit of uh, a few expletives flying around so uh, I shan't film this and we'll see how we get on. So I come across the first problem with this uh, spring which uh, as usual these days is a, is a pattern part and that is these prongs are too long. So if we sit the spring in its house position and we put the inside prong on its stub here it doesn't seat properly because of a lug on the case and because the prong is too long so the curve of the prong doesn't fit snugly around its anchor stud so I'm just going to take where are you there you go so I'm just going to take a quarter of an inch off that prong there Okay, this fits uh, a lot better now. It's much more uh, snug on its anchor post and the whole curve is engaging rather than just one flat. But uh, I did check the parts book as well and I'm, was, I, I was inadvertently trying to uh, put the kickstart return spring anchor plate on the wrong way around with the tang on the inside and it should be on the outside like so. That's better. Right, now we're in a position to uh, to try and seat that and also because that tang on the anchor plate is facing outwards now that gives us something to, uh, to grip on as well to facilitate that. So uh, let's see if we can do it this go. Okay that's the, uh, the plate on the shaft on its uh, squares. Wasn't too bad. The biggest problem that you have with this is, is not the tension of the spring itself. That's not bad. It's actually the fact that as you're twisting the plate round to go on to the kickstart shaft, um, the, the top uh, ring of the, of the spring gets caught in between uh, the, if you like, the uh, shaft stub on the case and the plate so you're continually trying to uh, to maneuver it out of the way so you can press the plate on um, but with a bit of jiggery pokery then it then it's possible and uh, it's now on I've just got to do a bit of dressing up of, uh, of the shaft here because um, it's been slightly damaged where the cotter bin's been too loose and I didn't actually notice that uh, before uh, but it only took a, a little tiny bit of a dress and then we should be able to get the kickstart on and we can uh, we can just give it a bit of a test uh, but anyway um, that's that job done next little job is um, fit the sump plate and and the sump gauze so sump plate uh, cleaned up really well uh, this is metal and plated um, the gauze filter that you saw earlier has cleaned up really nicely so all I've done initially is uh, assemble the gauze filter on the plate in between its two washers, sorry, two gaskets, um, and a light smear of silicon sealer on, on all surfaces, building that sandwich up. Um, so now we'll just need to fit that on the underside to its four studs and nuts, just making sure that uh, we get the uh, whole 
for uh, the uh, oil return valve lined up in the right position. So we'll do that now. Okay, uh, just dressed the uh, kickstart shaft a little bit and managed to uh, get the kickstart on snugly and that is returning fine. Caught a pin in just as a test fit while we sort out the uh, the cover and uh, things are look, beginning to look fairly complete. So last job that I want to do now on this side before we call it a day is uh, just run the impact on these inner screws. to get another about a sixth of a turn on them maybe and I think that's it run down there okay we'll call that a day um, so we're just about there with uh, the two covers so good progress um, next stop then in the next video we'll see if we can polish up the outer covers with the kit that I've got I've just realized actually in looking at uh, some of the mops that I've got with it that the kit is intended to be used with a drill rather than on a, a bench grinder um, anyway we'll see how we get on with that we've got instructions with it so we'll uh, we'll do that in the next video so uh, that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching everybody. Thanks for your interest. Thanks for any comments. Uh, thanks to uh, recent new subscribers. There's been quite a few actually. So I appreciate your interest too. So I'll see you again in the next video which will be uh, up uh, very shortly after this one. Thanks again everybody. Cheers. Bye bye.